hi guys and welcome to my channel in today's video we are going to be making this beautiful dress with handkerchief flare it is a variation of you know the picture that you saw on my thumbnail i'm going to be making this showing you the process so if you're interested in this tutorial definitely keep on watching if you're not subscribed to my channel yet if you're new here click the subscribe button click the bell so you get updates when i post new videos and now let's dive into our tutorial to start with, you're going to need your shoulder princess um, bodice pattern and this is it. This is what I have here. I have a tutorial on how to draft a shoulder princess pattern for the front bodice. Okay, so what I did for my own back bodice was to draft a normal, you know, basic bodice with the zipper allowance and everything. What I did was to mark my bust pan divided by 2. Mine is 7. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. I did not add that to this okay i did not add that to the back pattern and i made sure that the measurements i took here matched the front part okay so that the seam can match i don't want to have the back seam here and then the front seam be somewhere here so i sort of like measured what i had here marked from the armhole to you know get that point and that was it and then connected it from here straight to my bust span measurement divided by two do you understand? So I have like a slanted line here and then I cut it open. So we're going to be joining this back together to, you know, have that um, shoulder seam running all the way from the shoulder, you know, to the waist. So what I'm going to do now is to go ahead and cut it on fabric. Now I'm going to be using two different um, colors of fabric for this pattern. So the front pattern will be split into two. You have two colors in front, also the back as well. Okay, and then I'll be cutting the lining from the same fabric as well. So guys, this is what my front pattern will look like. Like I said, I have two colors going on here. So I just arranged it for you guys to see. I added half an inch to the center front because we're going to be joining, you know, this back together by half an inch. Okay, and I've gone ahead to cut my lining out as well. So this is what I want. You can go on to use just one color of fabric. That is definitely, you know, your decision, not mine, okay? So this is what I have for the front. And then this is what I have for the back, okay? So what I'm going to do next is to go on to... And I mentioned that while cutting, I have, you know, my seam allowances where they are supposed to be. So you need to cut yours and make sure you have your seam allowances. What I'm going to do now is to go ahead and join the pieces up together by a half an inch. Another thing is, it's also optional to line your bodies you can decide not to line it if you're not going to line it what i'll advise you to do is to overlock all the raw edges so that your fabrics um, do not fray okay so i'll just take everything to my sewing machine both front and back i'll be joining the pieces up together you know by half an inch seam allowance till we have our separate bodices so guys i've gone ahead to join the pieces up together and this is what it looks like okay so this is how the bodies will look like I joined the center front by half an inch, basically everywhere by half an inch. I've also gone ahead to join the shoulder seams by a half an inch seam allowance. And I went on to press all the seams open so that it lays nicely. Now what I'm going to do on one of these parts, specifically this um, green part of the bodies, is to place about a one inch bias tape. It's kind of stretchy so that I'll be able to sew this around the curved um parts of you know the shoulder princess seam if you don't know how to make a bias tape i'll put a link in the description box so you know how to make one for yourself very quickly and very easily and also do not need to use a bias tape if you do not have one there is a method for that okay so what i'm going to quickly do is to loosen up the seam that i have at the shoulder okay so that this can go in we don't want it sticking out so after loosening the seam, I'm going to go on to push the bias tape in there. So I push it in like this and then I'll take this to my sewing machine. So I'll be stitching the edges down along the princess seam, making sure that the princess seam is around the middle. So I'll take this to my sewing machine and then do that now. So it's just only on the outer part of the bodies that we are going to be making this, not the other one that will be serving as lining. So guys, after sewing the strip at the shoulder princess seam in front, this is what it looks like. As I was sewing, I made sure it was as flat as possible. So it doesn't look, you know, kind of weird. So I made sure it was as flat as possible. And 
yeah that's it i would have gone ahead to put a strip at the back so it would sort of like you know run from back to front but i decided not to that is a choice anyways so this is the main bodies of the bodies that we are making of the dress that we are making this is the lining part of it so i'm going to place them on top of each other with right sides touching like so and then i'm going to be sewing just one of the armhole with a half an inch seam allowance when it comes to lining bodies fully the turning of the bodies for me is usually different so i have to sew one armhole first then turn the fabric before going ahead to sew the other armhole so you guys are going to see how i do it in this tutorial even though i've shared it before in my last pin and four dress tutorial okay so i'll just go ahead and you know sew this up by half an inch and then come show you guys what we're going to do now. so guys i've gone ahead to sew the armhole i sewed the purple side and i went on to top stitch so after doing that what i'm going to do is to turn it right side out and this is how i'm going to do that okay so first off i open it up like this so we can have you know um two separate bodices okay so it's good this is it one bodice is this way another bodice is this way so i'm going to insert the lining bodice through the armhole that we just stitched okay so i pull everything in like this okay so when i pull it the lining part will now sit you know on the main fabric like this okay so now that i've um, brought everything out remember we still have this second armhole to stitch okay so i want to align it properly so i don't make any mistake i've stitched this one we have this one to stitch so in order for me to stitch this part what i'm going to do now is to grab the armhole of both um, main fabric and lining fabric so can you see what i'm doing so i grab the armhole of both main fabric and lining fabric and then i'm going to place it like this so please watch what i'm doing i grab the shoulder seams around that armhole make sure i spread it open so can you see how i am holding it so what i'm going to do now is to put them on top of each other right sides touching okay so this is how it's going to be and then i'll pin it down i'll come to the armhole area where we have the side seam i'm going to be repeating the same thing okay so i'll grab this one grab this second one right here as well and then i'm going to place them on top of each other with right sides touching and then i pin down so now that we have both shoulder seam and um, side seam pinned down around the armhole just go on to arrange it in such a way that you can sew all around it okay so this is what i have all around my armhole my shoulder seam here so i'm going to be sewing with a half an inch seam allowance all around like this so can you see so i'll be sewing all around like this and top stitching as well till i get right back to the shoulder seam so guys after sewing the armhole round like this i've gone ahead to top stitch it as well all i need to do is to just you know turn it to the right side and everything will be balanced okay so you can see how easy that was all we need to do now is to go on to sew the neckline and this um zipper side before we move to the skirt part of this um dress that we are making okay so what i'm going to do now is to grab my fabric the neckline that's the center front area of my fabrics both of them with right sides touching and this is how i'm going to do it first of all i open the bodice up like this and then i'm going to go on to pin the neckline down okay so after pinning it down we're going to have something like this okay i'm going to grab the shoulder seam around the neckline as well so the way this is part of the bodice is going to be sandwiched inside okay so that's why we have it squeezed like this so i'll go ahead and pin this part down then we're going to pin the rest of the neckline which is this part right here and then right down here 
is the zipper allowance part. We're going to pin it as well because we're going to be sewing that as well. Okay, so this is what I have on this side. I'll come right to this other side and I'll be doing the same thing. So I'm going to sew the neckline, which is from here now, all the way to this point and I'll top stitch. And after I top stitch, I'll go on to sew the zipper allowance part down by a half an inch seam allowance. I'm not going to top stitch the zipper allowance part. The only part I'm going to top stitch is the neckline, which I will sew by a half an inch seam allowance. So guys, we are done sewing the neckline and top stitching and this is how the bodice looks like. So what I'm going to do is to go on to bring my right sides outside, okay? So you can see what it looks like. So by the time you bring it out, everything will, everything will you know, be in place. So this is what my bodice currently looks like. I need to give this a good press so it can really lay nicely. So this is what we have, guys. Beautiful bodies. And now we are going to move on to the skirt part. So guys, I have my fabric folded into four as if I'm making a 360 degree flare. But of course, we're making a 360 degree flare in handkerchief form. So the calculation I did was I went with 20 divided by 3.14 and that gave me 6.36. Three six, so I'm going to be marking approximately six points, you know, three seven five, on that place from the apex. So from that point, I'll be marking six point three seven five all around using the apex part as a pivot point, which is that you know pointed part there. So from that point, I'll be marking that. I later realized that the twenty inches that I used, you know, divided by three point one four, the value that I got was a bit too much. I could have gone ahead and done twenty divided by. 6.28 instead of 3.14 so i later on had to make an adjustment on the design based on the amount of fabric that i had cut out so after marking those points i went ahead to connect the points like so and then i'm going to go ahead and cut that out so guys the amount of you know folds that you are going to make from this flare the folding that you will do is dependent on the amount of fabric that you have cut out after cutting this is what i have and what I'm going to do is to just open it up so that you guys can see what we have here. We're not covering out the bottom because we're not making normal circle skirt. What we're making is handkerchief flare. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is to cut open one of the parts that we have folded. After cutting it open, this is what we have. What I'm going to do is to go ahead and take this to my sewing machine and we'll be hemming all the straight parts that we have on this handkerchief flare. Okay, every single straight part we are going to hem. Another thing I'm going to do is to go on to stitch around the waist or around the top part of this um, flare, the curved parts, so that the fabric doesn't stretch. After hemming the flare, this is what I have. Okay, I went on to stitch the bottom of this flare so that the fabric will not stretch. And then what I've gone to do is to go ahead and mark one inch from the edge of the fabric on both sides. So guys, after the one inch from the edge of this fabric, I'm going to pleat four inches. Okay, so did you see that? I pleat four inches and pin down. So this pleat here on four will become two inches. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to leave half an inch, do you understand? And pleat four inches. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'll leave half an inch, Split four inches. So that's what I'm going to do to the till I get to this end. But from this other end as well, I'm going to mark one inch, pleat four inches, and so that I can get them somewhere in the middle. So guys, I want to show you what I've been able to do so far to have the fabric, you know, looking like this, which is what is on the thumbnail. To have it like this, I had to stitch down, you know, at the four inch mark where I pinned earlier. So I just held the fabric like this and then stitched it down. Now the next stitch that I made, I made sure that it was, I made sure that I held the fabric. The fabric was laying flat. That is, I held the four inch fabric. It was laying flat and then I stitched it parallel to the first one. Okay. I placed it over like this, you know, grab the second four inch. You will notice that this part here, now the fabric is kind of wider. It's because it is flat. But you need to make sure that the stitches that you are making are parallel to the previous one. One thing I realized is that the fabric that I cut out, the flare that I cut out was 
a little too wide at the um, waist area. So I would advise that if you want to cut yours, I did 20 inches by 3.14, right? I should have done 20 inches by um, 6.28 to have less folds at the back here. So I'm not going to go with this. I'm going to loosen everything that I have here and then go with um, knife pleats instead. I'll go with normal pleats instead of stitching this down, okay? So this is how to create this one if you want, but I'm going to be changing, you know, my own. So I did um, random knife pleats. I just folded the fabric and then stitched on top. So I prefer it this way. I prefer everything to flow freely from the top. So I actually like it like this, in this way than in the one I did um, previously. So what I'm going to do right now is to just place it, you know, where I said I'm going to attach it. So I just want to show you guys. So it's going to be running from the seam here to this part here, okay? So I'm going to keep this one aside. If you notice, in the picture on the thumbnail, there's kind of like a black fabric at the front, okay? So what I'm going to do is to loosen up the seam here on the main fabric. So after loosening up the seam, this is what I have. So I'm going to grab this um, piece of fabric. The fabric is measuring two inches in width. Before placing this on this fabric, is to mark 1.5 inches from the bottom. Okay, so I mark 1.5 inches like so. Okay, so just draw a straight line. So I'm going to place this fabric half an inch away from this line because we're going to be sewing this on top of that line by half inch such that by the time we fold this over, we'll be left with 1.5 inches. So it is going to match with the bottom of the bodice, okay? So I place this fabric half an inch away from this line and then I'll take it to my sewing machine and sew with a half an inch, okay? From here to here, do you understand? So guys, after sewing it on by half an inch, I'll go on to flip the fabric over like this, okay? Do a top stitch right, you know, at the edge of the fabric at the top here, and then I'll go on to seal up the side seam back, okay? I'll do the same thing for this other side as well. Okay, so guys, I'm all done stitching this up, and this is what the front will look like now. So can you see? So it looks as if we attached a band to the front. So guys, for the skirt part, I'm going with a pencil skirt. As you can see, here is the front, here is the back. If you've been on this channel, you should know how to draft a pencil skirt. If you don't know how to draft a pencil skirt, I'll leave a link in the description box so you can go ahead and watch how to, you know, draft a basic pencil skirt. That is all that I have here. So what I'm going to do now is to go on to sew the dots on this um, skirt and then I'll be joining the front and the back at the side seam. Okay, by a one, my side seam is one inch, so I'll join the front and back by a one inch side seam. I'll make sure to overlock the edges okay so guys i've gone ahead to join the skirt pieces at the side seam i've overlocked all raw edges of both the skirt and the bodies that we have here okay so what i'm going to do is to get our flare attachment and like i said earlier i'm going to be attaching this right just on one side and it's going to be from one um shoulder seam that's from the back to the other shoulder seam at the front okay so i'll just go on to place it's on top like this, okay? Ensure that the seams are matching as well. Very, very important. And I'm going to be sewing the waist of this dress by a half an inch seam allowance, making sure that the flare attachment is sandwiched in between. Do you understand? So I'll just go ahead and sew that. And that's basically what we have left. After I do that, I'm going to fix my zipper at the zipper allowance part at the back. I'm going to hem, you know, the bottom of the skirt and yeah that's it and then we're going to see what this looks on a mannequin so this is the final look of the dress i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did kindly give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't and turn on the bell so you get updates when i post new videos and i'll be seeing you in my next tutorial bye